The Asus Zephyrus G14 promises to be one of the most powerful computers that you can get, especially for the size. But can this hold up as your only video editing computer? Let's find out. Oh, we haven't used it yet. We can't break it. We gotta can't break it. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So this is a video. This is a video that we have not made in a while. We normally like to do all of these can you use it for video editing videos. We like making those about all sorts of stuff, but all the Intel computers we've checked out so far, eh, they've just been kind of boring. So the video program that I'm going to use today is called DaVinci Resolve. It's a program that I'm a very big fan of. It's the way that I do my video editing when I go to Windows. On Mac, I do still use Final Cut Pro, but I am, tr I do bounce between the two because there's a lot of powerful tools inside of DaVinci Resolve and you can get a free version too, which is the best part. Who doesn't like free? So let's import media, which is, this is why I like DaVinci Resolve so much is one, it has a lot of very powerful tools, but it also gives you a lot of very powerful ways to organize your media because ah, you, you can get lost in a project really quickly um, when you start having all sorts of assets saved in here. So I like that you can make new bins and all those sorts of things. So let's get this set up. First, let's do audio. Audio is the most important part of video, especially if you're doing this to YouTube because I'm a YouTuber. That's what I do my video editing for. Change track type to mono. I like mono. Hold on. Let's get over here where the actual thing starts. Cut back over here. So let's normalize audio levels to this right here. Normalize. Oh, that's going pretty fast. I lo that is going pretty fast. That normally takes a little bit longer to, uh, to do all that normalization. Okay, how does the audio sound now? Okay, so we finally got the Windows computer that I am most... Sounds pretty good. Horizon's kind of where all of the... Let's, we may need to adjust the, uh, let's bring up the gain just a little bit. We don't want to peak. See that? That's, that's a danger area. We'll have to keep an eye on that. The excitement is that. And we already checked out the Asus G7. Okay, sounds good. Audio, good. Let's go to color. Now I use Lumix cameras. This is the S5, the S5, the GH5. This is shot in V-Log, so we will use the Lumix provided LUTs, and I like using their nicest LUT. It's actually called nicest. It's not like, oh, dude, hey, it's their coolest. It's their nicest LUT. It's not, sick, bro. <laughs> no, it's actually called the nicest LUT. So let's apply LUT, and then we'll add just a little bit of contrast. We're not going to do anything too crazy today. This is obviously not being uploaded, so we don't have to worry about it being perfect. It just has to show its demonstrative purpose. So I like using, you see down here, this is the waveform. I don't necessarily trust monitors because all monitors look a little different, but I do tend to trust the waveform. Let's drop down the contrast just a little bit. Where do we, let's get a good, let's get a good skin tone shot. I think that looks pretty good. It's not perfect. It might be a little oversaturated, but I think that's, that's good enough to show what we're doing here. And so far, I haven't seen any problems with the footage. I think it's going pretty well. So let's go to the editing page. Now, something else I want to note is these files that I'm using with the S5s, they're in what's called H.265 or high efficiency video codecs. And normally on a computer, they're pretty rough. The H.265 HEVC is not easy for computers to handle. So you can see here H.265, I'm not, I'm not telling you a fib. Um, so we'll have to see how the computer is able to do this. That's one of the reasons that I use the M1 Max to do all of my video editing right now is how well they handle the high efficiency codec. So let's see. It looks like it also Something where I want you to pay attention to is right up here. You'll see a number. I shoot in 30 frames per second or technically 2997 frames per second. So if that says anything other than 2997, we have a problem. So let's see. What do we got? Screws on the bottom are filled. Instantly 2997. Ooh. Instantly 2997. I have not rendered any proxy files. This is just straight up from the camera. It definitely broke. 2997. At least put them in. 2997. It's kind of weird. 2997. Ooh, also the 2997. Yeah, I'm not seeing any slowdowns. I'm not seeing any stutters. There's some flex to it right there. The fans are on, but they're not going obscenely high. Can you see that? There's some flex there, but... That's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Uh, this is not a cheap laptop by any stretch of the imagination, but normally to get this kind of smooth functionality from these high efficiency files, you either got to be on an M1 Mac or you got to be on a beefy desktop rig. So that's, that's so good. Okay, let's get all of the files in there because I do like have three sets of footage here. Now, there are multiple ways to do this. This is just the way that I do it because I'm stubborn and I refuse to learn the easier ways. 
You know, everybody has that thing that they're just stubborn on. This is the thing that I'm stubborn on. I like syncing up these right here. I know th I know all the editing programs have ways to sync this better. Um, and maybe I should just stop being a pain in the butt and learn them. But I'm a pain in the butt and I haven't learned them. Okay, so that's, that's good enough for right here. So we'll cut. Delete. Ripple. Delete. 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 Okay, so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's make the preview a little bit bigger. There we go. Now how's it acting up? So these two layers, so two of these layers are high efficiency files and then the shot from the GH5 here is H.264 because it doesn't shoot the way that I want to in high efficiency. So these are the, so this is two layers, a 4K 10 bit in high efficiency and then one layer of 4K 10 bit in H.264. So let's see, how is this now playing? The fans have definitely kicked on. That feels fantastic. That's still nothing. It's still just... It's still just working though, like holy cow, that's impressive. Like, oh, we gotta, hold on, we forgot to rotate this around. And then we will, oh, it's, it's taking a second to up, there we go. It did take a second to do the update on the, uh, the thing there. So no, this is very impressive for editing, like it's very smooth. If I'm gonna be at the house, I'll just use my desktop. Ooh, one but, thing uh, that we normally do is since we have this set up now, we will unlink the audio files. And you don't need to do this, but I just think it gives a cleaner timeline. If we will then delete the track, delete the track that gives us a little more space to work with. There we go. Everything's, again, that's what I like about DaVinci is everything's nice. You can basically customize this how you want it. So I don't use this very much. I don't need to see the handsome fella doing all that work. I do all of my editing off of the audio here on the bottom. So we need that to take up as much of the screen as possible. So yeah, it's working really well. So let's cut together the intro and see how that works. The Asus Zephyrus G14 is the computer that I've been most excited about since, since the- Okay, we messed up right there. So we will delete, come back. Whoop, zoomed out a little bit too much. About since- Yeah, if you're sensitive to fan noise, the fan noise is definitely on now. Now we need to Come over here, we will turn on the magnetic clip because we need to come over here. Set a keyframe, come over here to the keyframe. Still got you, zoom in just a little bit so we can get that. Oh, Boom, perfect. What's up? Okay, then we do the funny cut because the funny cut is the funny cut. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. You all can figure it out. Okay, boom. So let's zoom in a little bit. Oh, you can see it is taking a second, you know, catch up to the, there we go. It took, it took a second to catch up to the effect I was trying to do. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not working too bad. But Intel is kind of boring right now. Intel is very boring right now. Now, something I really want you to pay attention to is these are all high efficiency files on a Windows computer. Yes, there was a couple of snags in there, and yes, the fans are turned on, but my other computers could never have even dreamed of handling this. Like, this is very impressive stuff. Um, again, this is not H.264. If I gave this solely H.264, I guarantee you that it would not have an issue. But this is high efficiency stuff. Like, you've heard me say that so often because... You know, it used to be, oh, we never use the high efficiency setting on the camera. It will cause our computer to set on fire and start crying. Well, this is a ultrabook that's not having too much of a problem. Dang, that's very impressive. So I'm not going to edit this whole video. You saw me do the intro. Um, everything seems to be working pretty well. I'm not going to waste your time today padding the length out to see how that would stand up. So what we'll do next, let's actually, we'll make this a five minute clip. And then, so we did the processing, we did the editing. Now let's check out and see how the rendering works. So we'll call this unboxing. We'll do QuickTime H.264 NVIDIA. This is all what YouTube would want. We'll set it to 4K. We'll set it to best because we're here to put this to the test today. We're not here to, we're not here to mess around. All right, unboxing, desktop, save, add. All right, so again, what I want you to pay attention to, look, all of that, H.265, all of this is gonna be tough for the computer to do. But again, pay attention up here. This will show you how fast it's rendering. So I shoot everything in 30 frames per second. That's the number. So if we see below 30 frames per second, we're probably gonna have a problem. So, and render. Okay, 35, 57. That's pretty good. You can see we're rendering. Oh, now we're down to 40. 58, 
61. So I consider a computer to be the high mark of a creation laptop if it can maintain above 60 frames per second in the render or twice real time rendering. Um, that's where the most impressive part for me comes in. And it looks like we're at 60. So we're at 60 ish. Um, it's not doing too bad. You can see it's a five minute clip and the program's estimating that it will take us two minutes to do it all. So, oh, now we're at 65. 70 is about a fan 70 is phenomenal. That's what we were able to average with the better processor and the better graphics card. So if this can maintain 65, that's good. That's phenomenal. And look, we've only been going for a few seconds and it's already down to like 130. Okay, I won't make you sit for this whole thing. So as soon as this is done, we'll jump back so I can give you my thoughts. Okay, just a few seconds left. Three, two, one, done. Completed in 225. So basically twice real time. So it was able to maintain an average of 60 frames per second. And that's, it's an ultra book. It's basically an ultra 14 inch laptop that's able to do, that's impressive. That's very, very impressive. Now the fans, yes, you can still hear the fans, um, but it's a windows machine. You're going to hear the fans regardless. Uh, this thing's crazy. This thing is crazy powerful. You saw it handle the high efficiency files, no problem. You saw it process the files, no problem. You just saw it handle this edit with almost no problem. And this only has 16 gigabytes of RAM. I bet after we did an upgrade where we added some more RAM that this would do even better. So to answer the question, could you use this as your only video editing computer? Absolutely, absolutely. It's got enough IO on it that you could plug it into a monitor. You could set it up just like you would a normal desktop machine. It doesn't have Thunderbolt 3, so you won't be able to set it into the same kind of system like a MacBook or even a Razer laptop with the Intel because this doesn't have Thunderbolt 3, but you've got enough stuff in here and USB-C that you could easily turn this in to a monster personal video editing tool. It's an ultrabook that just did the work of a much bigger and much more expensive computer. That's good job. I love the new Ryzen processors are phenomenal. And if you like this video and you are now considering buying one of these because it is very impressive, you can find my unboxing and initial impressions video right here. Click on it right here to go watch. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.